we're here with a Capture One lesson. Capture One, my raw processing software of choice. And today we're going to be looking at creating a great black and white image. So let's get into it. First thing that I'll usually do with a black and white image is assess the tonal range of the image. Sometimes what I tend to do is increase the Kelvin value just to bring a little bit more yellow value into my image. Now those of you who are familiar with black and white work, advanced black and white work, will know the use of this. What I'm doing over here is I'm playing with my skin tones and I'm playing with these wonderful highlight areas over here. So I'm going to have a look maybe at 7000 Kelvin see what that does for me okay I'm gonna go and click under my black and white tab over here on enable black and white then I'm going to be working with my yellow slider to darken some of the areas of the image I'm gonna drag that down to about minus 30 okay, just to bring some detail back into these highlight areas okay so that's the basis of getting started with my black and white image. I see my tint is quite high over here, which is quite unnecessary. Let's move on to my exposure over here. And the first thing that I'm going to look at is increasing the contrast of the, of the image. Good black and white image should have a really decent contrast range. And the whole time, while I'm increasing my contrast, I'll always be checking out my histogram. Just making sure where my image is lying. So I'm getting some deeper blacks. You might have noticed that um, we came closer to a zero value over there. And my highlights are still peaking over here. So obviously that's these areas of the image where I'm shooting almost directly into the sun, which is peaking my highlights. So I'm not too worried about that. Usually, if I didn't have sun in the image, I'd be very worried if I was clipping the image over here into my highlight zone. But because I know I'm shooting into the sun, I'm never going to recover that. I can drag my exposure right down, but I can promise you that's one stop down and I'm still clipping the image over here. All right, so I'm, I'm really not bothered about that. Let's take it back up to a zero value on the exposure. and. The next thing that I'm going to look at after increasing my contrast is I might just open up the shadow areas very, very slightly. I'm always careful to avoid overdoing this one because it tends to give too much of an HDR feeling to the image. What I can do now that I've opened up my shadow areas, I'm going to bump a little bit more contrast into the image. I always tend to find that black and white images can take a hell of a lot more contrast than what a color image can take. Okay, it's starting to look like something respectable. At this point, I'm not finished with anything yet, but at this point, I do like to go and have a look at my localized adjustments over here. Probably my favorite tool in Capture One, where you can create adjustment layers for your image and either use a brush to draw localized areas of the image. So that's what it'll look like. You can set your brush size and you can paint localized areas of the image or otherwise you can select a grad and drop a gradient in on a layer. So that's one of the first things that I'm going to do. I'm going to drop a bit of a gradient in over the concrete here. Okay, so what this is doing then, we're just fading it out slightly over that area there. And I want to increase you can see it's fading out to the edge. I usually don't work with my mask switched on, but for the purposes of tutorial, we'll do that. Okay, so I'm gonna increase my contrast in this mask area. And what I'm looking to do here is just to get a little bit more balance with the left-hand side of the image where I've got a lot of sun and a lot of shadow. On the same side so I'm just looking to push a little bit more contrast into this area of the image all right so I'm gonna go and switch my mask off because I really can't work like that I was just doing it for the purposes of those who aren't familiar with capture one just to have a look see I'm gonna say only display mask when drawing just to give you an idea of where your mask is all right so what we've got now I'm gonna go to my mask and switch it off 
and you can see the difference in contrast and I'm switching it back on and the contrast is bumped up again okay so along with that I'm just going to lighten the concrete a touch about a half a stop over there okay right what I'm seeing now is that my mask is not great I'm losing a little bit too much towards the end of my mask so I'm just going to redo my mask with the mask button still set what I'm going to do I'm going to redraw it and just drag it slightly further out so that it dissipates in this space over here much smoother gradient but still not happy so let's drag it even further okay that's got me happy let's just switch it off and on okay no mask all right and that's with my layer mask active then okay much happier with that you see what i mean about balancing this side creating a more similar tonal range on the concrete over here as to what i've got on this side of the image okay so then the next area that i'm going to look at then is well let's go and start labeling these and call that concrete next one i'm going to have a look at is liz and dion overall What I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch to draw mask and I'm going to take quite a big brush over here so that I can just affect this area of the image here. Right, I'm going to start painting that on. And again, this is for the purposes of just in a localized area controlling the contrast and the exposure. I'm going to take this down here also, affect these pieces. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just take the exposure up slightly, really half a stop to three quarters of a stop. Let's go three quarters. Okay, remember when you're working with the mask brush, if I right click my mask brush, you'll see my opacity is way down and my flow is way down. 10% and 25% so the reason for that obviously is that you can work a lot more accurately so bear in mind when I'm changing exposure by three quarters of a stop over here it's absolutely not three quarters of a stop effect on the image itself it's far less than that because my brush flow and opacity is set way down um, I always work like this it just gives you a hell of a lot more control Okay, so let me go and switch this piece of mask off. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in quite a bit closer and focus on Dion's dress. Okay, on the same layer, I'm going to go in and put another layer of mask. Again, remember, flow and opacity is way down, but I'm doing that because I need control. Okay. and let's see what we're getting out of that one okay starting to get happier all right at the moment we're just going to fast forward this because this is a bit of a tedious process Okay, so right now I'm going to come in a little bit closer on the ladies' faces and I'm going to have a look for highlight areas that I want to lift. So, really, I can see there's an area on Elizabeth's face over here because she's facing away from the main light. Dion's getting a lot more exposure on her face than, than is Liz. So, I'm going to start here working on Elizabeth's face just to lift these highlight, well, these mid to shadow areas and create a little bit of a highlight on her face. So this technique is very similar, well, I guess exactly the same as what you would have spent your time dodging and burning in a darkroom in the old days, which I did spend 20 years doing. So one of the reasons why Capture One is my favorite raw processing software is this extreme control 
that you have over dodging and burning your raw file. For now, I'm just going to switch the mask on and off so that I can see how much I'm affecting the image at the moment. There's most definitely still some work to be done, but I just want to check on my progress. Okay. Okay, so let's zoom out and get an overall picture of where our image is. It's starting to look like something. So at this point, I'm going to go back to my main exposure controls. And I think I'm gonna put a touch more contrast into this image. Okay, so a little bit more contrast. I'm gonna lift the exposure slightly and then probably come back to this area over here and control this area again. So I'm going to go for uh, a quarter of a stop initially. Okay, that's a little bit light, so 0.2. That's about a fifth of a stop. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. What I'm going to do again is open up my shadows a little bit more just to see where I'm going to. Okay. Not often that I work with my highlight slider in the dynamic range. I find that especially with the black and white work, it tends to end up looking like an HDR image rather than a well controlled or well exposed image. At this point, I am starting to see the semblance of a good black and white print. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my localized area corrections. You might think I'm overdoing it on this, but remember, when we were printing in dark rooms years ago, we had a set of paddles and a set of boards with little holes in them. And the boards with the little holes in them were for burning the areas of an image. Obviously the little hole let light through while the rest of your board blocked the light from exposing the paper. So hence it burned in areas of the image. And our little paddles would have usually a thin piece of wire with a little round disc of paper on the end of it and that was inserted onto the image while it was exposing and you dodged or held back exposure on areas of the image so that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing over here I'm just going to be lightening this and it's the same effect as dodging or holding back slightly on this area of the image okay there we go all right, so I'm going to add one more, and I'm going to call that sky. And over here, I'm going to be burning in areas of the image. Ever so slightly. I don't want to be affecting this too much because I did intentionally put this highlight in to create a little bit of a dynamic in the image. I'm just going to have a look and see what pulling back the highlights will offer me in that space. I want to be very subtle about it. I don't want massive effect. I still want this area to flare out, but I want to be absolutely sure that I've got the correct amount of definition in the space. Okay, so I'm going to drop my exposure also quite aggressively. So I can see what the large difference is in the beginning. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is switch the mask off and bring it back in again. Okay, it's a very subtle little difference, but that's all I want. I don't want to affect that area too much. Reading off my histogram here, I might want to just tweak my black levels ever so slightly to build a little bit more contrast into this image. So if I increase my contrast over here, if I pull my levels down over here, 
it's going to affect my overall histogram in a similar way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull my levels down by maybe four points, five points and see if that gives me a more pleasing result. Absolutely. So it's stretched out my histogram over here almost to a good solid rich deep black point. So overall exposure of the image then, let me give it a last adjustment. As I said, a lot of the time I'll work in certain areas of the image and build the image. I'm very seldom going to jump into an image and find a solution immediately unless it's a shoot that I'm quite familiar with. Okay, so on specific dodge what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the girl's hands here and I just want to put a little bit more emphasis on the relationship between these two characters so I just want to bring out maybe a half a stop or so details on Dion's hands. And remember my exposure over here because my opacity of my brush isn't set to full. I'm doing that because I want more control and the effect isn't a full two stops but probably more in the region of a quarter stop or so. Okay, so let's just switch that layer off. And yes, I do like it. And for me, for now, that's about it.